Hey ladies and gentlemen, today's review is of the Trek Rail 7. This is the Generation 2 model, but the Gen 2 and Gen 3 are more or less identical. We'll get into that in a little bit, but we'll be testing how this thing climbs, how it does on straightaways, how it does a more technical climbing, and how it does on descents. From technical to terrifying, we'll give you a review of all of its componentry, how well the bike meshes together out of the factory, what add-ons you might want to put onto it, and overall, how well does that electric motor do? And how natural does the bike feel? So I found this using Trail uh, All Trails, the app. It's like a $40 a year subscription or something, or you can try it free for seven days if you just need it for the moment. But it's how I found it. So they gave you like exact verbatim navigation to the place, it's unbeatable. You know, that thing is incredibly well, light for any bike. its predecessors, it's really heavy. But if you compare it to other e-bikes, it's extremely light. Let's check out its components. The Gen 2 and Gen 3 rail more or less have these exact same components. The only difference between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 is changes to the motor and the smart system. The Gen 2 comes with a 625 watt hour lithium battery, which is pretty impressive. We'll get you around 25 miles and if you use the ecosystem, you'll get way farther. But they have moved on to a generation three rail, which is just as impressive, but it now includes the smart system. That is the major defining difference. I don't know how smart it is, if that's an extra mode, if it's just more efficient, if you can get more out of the same watt hour battery, but it's definitely worth a look into. In fact, the rail seven was so impressive during my run, I think even the rail five would just blow people away. For starters, you have an enormous cassette back there controlled by an XT derailleur. Shimano XT has been historically really good throughout the years. No look, surprise, bond tracker components, tire and rim combos. We will put these to the test today. Also, that whole back rear cassette is controlled by one single sprocket up here, an E13 drivetrain. And all the suspension is outfitted with rock shocks. You have the Debonair Deluxe shock that comes stock on this frame for the Gen 2 and Gen 3. And if there's a rock shock in the frame, well, you guessed it. You probably have one up front. We have the Rock Shocks Domain RC that is E Mountain Bike certified. But all that means nothing really without the crown jewel, the Boss Performance Line CX Drive. And for the Gen 3, the Smart System Drive. That's what we're working with, so let's go ahead and see how good it actually is. This is the Benham Trail in Williams, Arizona. I'm going to kind of speed warp through most of the climb with, and then stop to pause on some highlighted parts that I thought were really important for this bike's climbing ability. Then I will show you in great vivid detail just how well it descends. So disclaimer, I have not aggressively mountain biked like this since 2010. But before that, I used to downhill and free ride and occasionally I hit a trail up. So I've been out of the game for over a decade. There's been tons of evolution in performance. Obviously, we're riding it. But back in my day, you had rules. You couldn't get away with geometry like this. You couldn't get away with 2.5 inch tires and you'd go uphill like this. You also couldn't get away with 160 millimeter travel. Like five inches was pushing it for an all mountain trail bike. And when the bike went over 30 pounds, like people flipped out. Like the average trail bike was 30 to 35 pounds, like 50 pounds, that was downhill free ride standard. That was how thick and heavy the frames were. So I got a 52 pound bike with super slack geometry. When I got on top of it and I turned it, it felt like a downhill bike of old. 2.5 inch tubeless tires. I would be lucky if I got away with like 2.1 or 2.2 max without like the rolling resistance. For heck's sake, we still had three sprockets in the front gear. We still had our front derailleur. None of that's here anymore. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you because I paid outright for this bike. I'm not sponsored. This is not a sponsored video. I could give a flying crap what Trek thinks about this video, but I, I mean, I have nothing but good things to say about the bike. And it's probably because I've been out of it for over a decade. I'm just super easily impressed. Apparently they make all carbon versions with like Bluetooth derailleurs and all kinds of crap. And that's probably even way better than this thing. But I think this thing was so good by itself, standalone, I probably could have got the Trek Rail 5 and just been just as blown away. I mean, it has that 650 watt hour battery. There was the big thing the guy tried to stress on the 25 mile range. And I tell you, I didn't go no 25 miles anywhere, but I did travel what I thought were some fairly lengthy distance, both in town and the flat street. And then obviously a few trails here and there. 
and that battery meter i mean there was five bars it never went down to like four bars ever but i did also keep it mainly in the first mode that's ego mode it has eco tour emtb and turbo that you can tell the difference in the first three and then you get to turbo mode and it was not that much more impressive than emtb and really when you're climbing like this over some technical stuff anything above tour is like death like you're gonna accidentally wheel your bike and fly off the hill you can use emtb and turbo like if you're going up straight non-technical terrain or like a fire road but in this type of stuff i didn't really see a need to go above the tour mode and definitely over the technical stuff the eco mode was the safest especially if you wiped out or had a bunch of fails like i had a, a ton of iq mistakes i'm blaming old age but here something like this if you kind of turned widely and then you pedaled and you were in a higher mode, you definitely would have spun out and wiped out there. But on all the flat stuff like this that's non-technical, you would have been perfectly fine in a higher mode. Ow. So climbing is not my thing. It's like something, it's just like a necessary evil. You had to kind of put up with it. But this mic makes it pretty doable. It doesn't do all the work for you. You still got to pedal. You still got to keep cadence. You still got to do all the things to make you go forward. It's just the motor that gives you that nice little extra bit and helps you out. So you can just get to the fun stuff. So what does this do for us? Well, for one, you get to have fun for a lot longer because all the climbing from long hills, even to these little small switchbacks, don't tire you out. And what really impressed me was like its ability to go in just straight raw dirt. Like this is a, a sand wash right here. You might make it a few hundred feet and that's a pretty in shape person before you're just like screw this and you just walk it the rest of the way but this bike went through it pretty flawlessly i was very surprised as long as you kept pressure on the back tire and weight off the front it like just coasted right through the sand coasted right through the wash like i was that was really kind of where it sold me i was already sold but this it means if you got to deviate from the trail you can but for those long climbs, you're just going to have to suck it up and do it. The E-Assist helps you out a lot. Truthfully, I would have not been able to climb this trail myself. I would have given up and walked up a long time ago. And because of this factor, I really only stuck to trails that you could shuttle up and down from, like having a carpool going. But this thing, it's your own personal shuttle. It may not drive you all the way to the top energy free, but you will now at least be able to get to the top and experience trails that you would avoid rather because of the climbing. But the bike wasn't all cakes and candy, it did have flaws. For one, the geometry, the slack geometry does catch up with you. And though that Transix gravity seat post dropping and rise is really nice and helps you out a lot with climbing, still doesn't compensate for the geometry. You notice this the most when the climb is not only steep, but also technical, where it is a bike with more tight geometry, when you turn it at like one or two miles an hour, it actually goes where it's supposed to go. Or with this one, it's so slacked, you kind of have to veer it and give it time to turn and it doesn't help you even with the seat post activated all the way up you still run into balance issues it's not just the geometry it's how tall the bike is so trek does make a fuel exe and that thing is shorter and lighter has less travel same geometry but likely still climbs a little bit better and then obviously the full carbon rails or the rails with at least carbon rims would also likely ascend much better and that might actually be my next upgrade for this bike i'll tell you this bike did me well today best bike i've ever driven all this crap we climbed up right now i know i gassed out towards the last two or three bends but i would have gassed out way down there before any of that it would have never made it up here to the top it's not a downhill bike it's not a free ride bike we don't have eight to ten inches of travel just to compensate for all those big bumps we don't have ultra slack geometry but the thing about this is when i did get on it the, the geometry is very slacked it's very similar to downhill geometry and it's got six inches of travel six inches of travel did you pretty good back in the day so I think this bike is very capable of going down. We're going to shut all the modes off. They are unnecessary. So I for sure got a little bit of ring rust doing this, but it feels great. All the suspension so far is soaking up this mild stuff, 
and the switchbacks, though it's terrible to try and climb up a switchback, it's much better to descend on a switchback with select geometry. Also, one thing I haven't mentioned enough in this video, but is probably the biggest component in this by success is the Transix remote seat post. Its ability to drop 130 millimeters, that's five inch drop. Like it's all the way down right now. And that is exactly what I need to parallel my body over the seat with the geometry of the bike to keep myself from getting bucked over on crazy stuff. I'm not gonna go terribly fast this run between 20 and 30 miles an hour max. Cause real life, my tires are pressured way too high and my fork's not dialed in. I just kind of took my bike out right from the bike shop, it's brand new and I'm just riding it as is. But definitely if I was gonna do a second run, I would fix those things and probably, and I would obviously have a good map of what we have and we can reasonably expect going down. And your, your second run's always way faster after your practice run. So I would think this bike could do 30 to 40 miles an hour, barely okay before like the lack of travel is gonna start hemming you up at high speeds at least over technical stuff. I mean, you got a smooth runway, probably do 60 in this thing, no problem. It really kind of makes me wonder what the higher version of this is. We're talking about full carbon rims, possibly the rim and frame being completely carbon, which would make this ride incredibly smooth, both up and down, getting an XOT type derailleur that never falls out of shift and is Bluetooth and can actually shift and not load. You're looking at an unbeatable bike, the higher you go up in the model, but for this straight model, it doesn't necessarily ride better than the traditional mountain bike equivalent, but just it just helps you climb so much better. I really needed that. A lot of us really need that. A lot of us aren't human goats. We don't sit there in our paperweight XC bikes with spandex on, like shivering in the cold like a chihuahua sucking down a gel pack, where the biggest highlight of your ride is that you were able to clear a log going uphill at one mile an hour. I know that that in the moment for you is very thrilling. I even get that, but that in no way compares to stuff like this. Even at like mild speeds, this is far more thrilling than climbing up. And though clearly e-bikes have taken over the mainstream cruiser bike industry, like just get around bikes in town, that industry belongs to e-bikes for sure, like forever. But for the mountain bike, not so much. There's still a pretty good push to not allow these bikes on a lot of other trails. And I'm more or less gonna contribute that to old heads who are just not giving this up because it was a flex back in the day to be able to climb well, purely on your own genetics and your own fitness. And that goes away. Like there was a, I passed a guy on the main road and he had a pretty impressive cadence going uphill, like 10, 12 miles an hour. I couldn't do that. But I passed that guy like he was standing still. And personally, if that was me, I would look at that guy passing me like cheater. So I get it. But at the same time, that niche of people who just like to climb up and do that, that you're a very small realm of people in the mountain bike world. The majority of people like to go up to go down fast. That I would say in general, the more thrilling thing about mountain biking is carrying a consistent cadence through stuff like this at a nice speed that's good enough to get your adrenaline glands going. And really there's only so many trails out there that you can shuttle to the top and go down like this. Most any trail that's worth going down like this, you're gonna have to climb up just like we did this one. And well, bikes that climb really well don't descend very well. The best middle ground has always been all mountain trail bikes, but this one, aside from some of the issues with technical climbing, it climbs better and descends better than any trail bike I have ever been on. And it's because the electric assist allows you to get away with so much more. Sure, the bike is twice the size and twice as hard to push manually, but the electric makes you four times the person. And you're still having to work for it the whole time. I never thought one time where I was like, man, this is cheating, I'm on a motorcycle. It wasn't like that. If anything, it makes you work harder so you can experience more. But if there is one major warning about this bike that I would give to the general public is that it can potentially give you an overinflated sense of confidence and skill. Ow! That was all right. Let's get going. That was dope. That was what's up. Right like this isn't complete without a crash. Because this bike was so fun to ride, I may or may not have gotten a little carried away and pushed it a little too far. I mean, I just got off the couch. The bike is not tuned right, but whatever. There's where my head hit. I would always recommend somebody get a full faced helmet the mountain bike ones with a bunch of vents like this that aren't terribly heavy. And then some even have like the switchblade option where the, the, the full face comes off. 
There are quite a few really nice options out there, but it only takes hitting one tree or falling off the mountain into a jagged pile of rocks or even getting attacked by a wild animal suddenly, then you'll immediately know just how useful a full face helmet really is. And also body armor. And the knee pads, those fox enduros, those things are garbage. Like they, they kept riding down and that's the correct size for me. So gotta get some better knee shin guards and a body armor suit up top that at least covers the shoulder. So the one thing that got injured was my shoulder. Now I got a bum shoulder. Probably not gonna be able to make that second run which would have been way faster on a tuned bike with knowledge of the course, but maybe for another day. All right, the bike. Considering it, I wiped out a few times uh, and it got thrown right into a tree, it, it did all right. The only thing I think I got here is, I got some cable failure here, whatever. That was a blast. It truly was. It was, uh, the bike really exceeded expectations. So how do we end this review? I think by showing you that we're just riding through a random sand wash, and if anybody who rode a traditional bike, no matter what level it is, understands how terrible it is to do this, I'm just coasting through this rather seamlessly. This bike in no way feels or is anywhere as powerful as say an electric motorcycle or a traditional motorcycle, but as long as you're willing to do the work with it, it'll take you most places anywhere. That's a really big defining factor because even in a regular mountain bike, you're really stuck to single track. So even a non-maintenance track where grass and stuff has grown over it over time is very hard to go through, but this thing would just go right through all that. The single biggest upgrade I could do for this bike right now is probably go to carbon rims, then that's followed by a new fork. Later on, we'll look at a new rear shock. And then most importantly, I really want that SRAM XO T-Type Bluetooth derailleur. That has to be the ultimate upgrade. Something that never falls out of tuning can shift up on a load. That's gonna save me from a lot of these wipeouts and fails I had. In receiving feedback from others about e-bikes like this, specifically the rail and others like it, they say that you really feel the weight. I guess if you come from cross country or even super light all mountain trail riding, you would maybe see a difference. But in the end, it's still a bicycle. You'd get used to it fairly quickly. It's not like it's a motorcycle where there's significantly a huge change in weight distribution and how you have to throw the thing around. 52 pounds really isn't much. You should be able to still throw that thing right over your shoulder. Any reasonably strong person who's fit, which most people who mountain bike are fit to some degree, just get it over for short periods of time. I will say though, it does suck to push it uphill if you wipe out. Pushing a 50 pound bike uphill for a period of time does stink, but it is what it is. Can't have everything. But you can come really close with this bike. And then also think about the Trek Fuel EXE, which is more of a regular bike and less of an e-bike and much more nimble and probably better to climb with. It's also a good option. I would try both before you pull the trigger. Anyways, guys, this is my review. Thank you much. Safe travels and happy biking. I'll see you on the next one.